G'day and welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on the Big Barra. Got a couple of issues that I thought I'd share. Five, four, three, two, one. Old school only is go. <laughs> Before we start, if I'm a bit somber, I've got news today that a old mate of mine, a um, fellow car builder, car guy, hot rodder and um, fiery colleague, um, was killed this morning and uh, yeah, sort of breaks my heart a bit. We haven't been in touch for a long time. He was um, tragically killed this morning, serving his community, doing what he loved and um, my heart goes out to his family, his kids. And uh, yeah, it's difficult times. So one of the big issues I've had now, it's, nearly, it's coming on nearly four years since this was done. It's, four, it's December now, it was January four years ago um, when I did the barrow conversion. Shush! And uh, I often get asked what problems, is it still going? Yeah, it's going strong, it's my daily driver. Um, but one problem I've continually had is the um, coolant overflow bottle keeps melting because um, of the radiant heat coming from the exhaust and the turbo. So this um, coolant reservoir, I'll show you in a sec, I've gone through four in the last four years. Um, some of them last longer than others, but you generally know something's wrong when you start seeing steam coming out from under your bonnet, which is kind of the norm. This time, it was just overheating, I didn't see any steam. Um, and I'm like, oh, maybe my radiator's no good, I need to sort of radiator out. And I got out of the car one day after I'd driven it not far and it was hissing, I'd hear it hissing, so I thought I'd better get and have a look see where that hissing's coming from. And it was my coolant reservoir again. So last time I bought a genuine style plastic one, um, I ended up getting online and buying an alloy one, which I've never fitted, so I figured I'd wait till this one goes and I'll fit up my alloy one and that's what I'm going to show you today. So let's go and have a look at what's going on. I also have my trusty bonnet strut. As uh, anyone with a barra knows, yeah, these old Falcon struts don't last very long. So the issues I normally have, it melts this outer um, pipe inside under the hose and it squirts that way and you can see remnants of uh, coolant that's been burnt on the, um, the heat shield and stuff like that. Um, but this time it wasn't squirting from there, it's actually split the seam around the back here from what I can tell. It's definitely leaking and um, I topped it up uh, two days ago and I haven't driven it far, probably 10 kilometres and it's already empty. And aside from that, she's um, exactly the same as you've always seen it. Righto, if your car is original, you'll just have two of these clamps. When I changed this and put this turbo system in, I had to change the tubes and I put some normal hose clamps up here. So that's why I need the screwdriver. She's already started to melt this. It's all disformed, I don't know if you can see, but that's out of shape. What about this one? That one's not too bad. That must be the hot line coming in, I'd say, from the turbo. We've got two 10 mil duvets on the side here. Actually, next, we need to take off this big one, and I'm gonna need a pair of multi-grips for that, hang on. Peel that back, give it a twist if I can without taking that turbo pipe off. Actually, we'll take these off. So there's two 10mm bolts at the back here. And there it is. Let's have a look. So there's nothing terribly obvious, but I saw water dripping down from here when it was running, so I'm guessing it's split in that seam. But if you can see here how deformed that is, and that's what was happening on this outer one, and I ended up switching it over to get the heat away because it was closest to the turbo over here and the exhaust, and it's definitely melted that one. And this one isn't that old, but Let's chuck it in the bin and we'll get the other one. So with the new one, 
this is it, alloy. Um, the only downside to this, apart from it not, it's not going to split. Um, heat isn't going to affect it. It's going to get hot, but it's not going to affect it. Um, you can't see through it, so you don't know where the level is. I don't know what's inside here. Where the factory ones are transparent, so there's no water line. There's nothing, so we'll just have to work that out. But it's going to be more reliable for this turbo thing. So it comes with this um, fitment kit, mounting kit. There's your big pipe. Screw in with a O-ring. You've got two smaller ones for the smaller ones with O-ring. Screw in, and you have the mounting bracket and a uh, Allen key which screws that on. So we'll put that together and we'll install it. So you'll need your big adjustable hammer for this one. That's it. I might do that first. And it doesn't line up. How good's that? We can make it line up though. <clears throat> Beautiful. We'll stick them in first. the other way now. Lock tied it in there. Do you know what? I've just realised you have an extra outlet on this. I don't like that. You'll work it out. <laughs> so, yeah, different style of cap. And we have an overflow. Um, Might just run it out to the ground. I can worry about it. This is the catch can, really, and then another overflow to another catch can. I'll just run it to the ground. Let's go and find some hose. So I don't have anything long enough, and if you're doing this from the get go and you still had your piece here of uh, stuff that you cut out when you put this line in, that'd be perfect, but I don't have that. I've used it on something else, so I've got a short piece. Um, it'll get me to Repco and I've got to go up there anyway, so I'll chuck that in here now and um, We'll swap it over when we get there That'll do. So probably not hundred percent necessary on this particular job But it's always good habit to do is run inside and put your heater on hot um, It's the middle of summer here, so I'm not using my heater, but you don't want to cause an airlock in your system because it's a on off valve it closes it off and you'll get an airlock if you're not especially if you're draining your coolant doing a coolant swap or engine out whatever always have your heater in the hot position so I'm gonna go and put that in the hot position now I'll fire it up and um, we'll put some water in there Watch me make a mess. another little thing that you want to do too I hope you can hear me over this engine 
this. You don't put your radiator cap back on until your engine's at operating temperature, your thermostat's open. It, one, it ensures you don't get air, air locks. And um, the other thing it ensures is that you've got the right amount of coolant there. Because once that air's gone, the coolant's going to drop down. So we'll just wait for that to warm up now. The best way to know whether it's circulating properly and it's all open is by sticking your finger in. It can be done with any radiator. If one that starts to get warm or hot, you know it's open and functioning properly. And then you can put your cap on, make sure the level's right. But... So uh, while that's um, warming up, I'll just move away so you can hear me. Um, I mentioned earlier about that not be, having been able to see the, the level in it, but I didn't realise it had the overflow tube at the top. So what you would need to do with this particular type of canister is run a catch can. So I'll organise one of those little round alloy ones, but for now I'll just run a hose down to the ground. Um, but that, what I'm saying is you'd fill it all the way to the top and then it'll can transfer to and from the catch can. So you don't really need to know where it is as long as it's at the top. Does that make sense? Probably not. I've been trying to think what else I've done to this thing since I've seen you last and um, not a lot. Uh, rotors, I've done rotors. Um, all the brakes. Nothing mechanically. Um, I do need to service my transmission. We'll get that up on a hoist and do that soon. Uh, that's been just over a year and a half now since I put that in. But no, everything's working okay. It just needs a good service. It's a typical mechanics car. Just, they just everything just is overlooked. Um, the other thing too that I'm noticing that tells me it's not opened yet is I'm still got clear water in there because that's what I put in it, and the car's got coolant in it, so that should go a yellowy colour um, when that opens. So we just got to wait a bit longer. Here we go. It's coming out now. Some coolant in there. Wait for all the bubbles to come out. Here they come. It's fully open now. All that air. That's what you want to wait for. And it should just settle, which it looks like it's doing. So that's why you need to wait for it to um, air out before you put the cap on. I've already put a significant amount of water back in that. I'm just going to top it up again and um, we'll be able to put the lid on it and we'll go for a spin. Oh, it's hot in here. Let's turn that heater off. Get some AC blowing on my face. Might even wind the window down. And um, I've got to go to Repco, get some bits and pieces. So we'll test it out, make sure it's all um, doing what it's supposed to do. Temperature gauge is all right, considering it's like 30 odd degrees out there today. Just um, hope there's no wind noise from that AC blowing on this microphone. I just got gas back into an old mechanic mate of mine that um, was at Repco when I was there, so it's probably another an hour. Um, but engine's running good. It's uh, there's nothing leaking, which is excellent. So that's pretty much it. If you've hung around for this long, I really appreciate it. Um, I know not a lot of people do, but I know there's a few people that do. I want to thank you for that. Um, it's been a long time between videos um, and today was particularly rough and I thought the best thing I can do is get outside and um, play with my car, get my mind off things and um, it's been good, I'm glad I did. I think my camera's sliding around, is it? So anyway, the next video will be 
on my VE Valiant. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but I've got an automotive carnage shirt on, which my mate DJ sent over to me with some parts for my Valiant. So we're going to play with that. So it's kind of like that video is sponsored by my mate DJ at Automotive Carnage, and um, it's going to, yeah, we've got a bit of work to do on that. So we'll sort that out. Um, he was nice enough to look after me with some bits and pieces, so I'm giving him a shout out. There'll be a link in the description if you don't know the channel. It's awesome. He drags stuff out of the bush, makes some pretty wild machines. It's amazing what he finds out there in um, the gold fields of Western Australia. So go and check out his channel. Um, but yeah, next video is going to be on that. And after that, we're going to start on the big VG hardtop, which I've been stinging for a long time to get into. We're back. Yeah, I've been, what the heck, I've been stinging for a long time to get into that, I've been stinging for a long time to get into that um, car, so it's time, we'll get into that and get that thing on the road, which is, that's the next project, I've got a heap of stuff going on, but yeah, let's play with that, so anyway, that's it from me, stay tuned, be good to your mates, like, subscribe, all that stuff, and I'll see you on the next one, cheers.